one more time. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And welcome to another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. On this edition, we're going to be talking about two familiar faces to the Who That Nation. I'm talking Malcolm Jenkins and Roman Harper. We're going to be talking about Malcolm Jenkins and how important will his role be with the New Orleans Saints this 2020 season and we're also going to be talking about Roman Harper being inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame. But first, we're going to be talking about Malcolm Jenkins. Let's focus on Malcolm Jenkins and how important will his role be with the New Orleans Saints this 2020 season. You know, Malcolm Jenkins being signed by the New Orleans Saints this offseason, he, he brings a lot of emotions uh, versus when he got uh, signed by the Philadelphia Eagles a couple years back. You know, when Malcolm Jenkins uh, left and went to Philadelphia, a lot of people in the Who That Nation were happy. They were excited. You know, they felt like Malcolm Jenkins was, was a disaster. Uh, he was a, a person that wasn't worth, you know, the Saints' time, wasn't worth the Who That Nation's time. A lot of people just felt like he was a liability in the secondary. And then he goes to Philadelphia and he resurrects his career. He plays six seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles and doesn't miss one single game and becomes one of the heart and souls of the of the defense and becoming an unsung leader not only of the Philadelphia Eagles uh, but the NFL as a whole. And now he comes back to New Orleans Saints older, wiser, and ready to take on the responsibility of being a leader in the secondary. You know, I'm about to say something that may sound controversial to people, might sound crazy, some people might raise a few eyebrows when I, when I say this, but here it is. I feel like Malcolm Jenkins being signed by the New Orleans Saints this 2020 season is one of the most important free agent acquisitions the Saints have made since Darren Sharper. I feel like Malcolm Jenkins is that important to the Saints defense. That That is my God honest truth. Okay, Malcolm Jenkins is an incredibly smart, talented, tough football player. Is he the fastest player on, on a defense I've ever seen? Absolutely not. Is he the best uh, safety with the best cover skills I've ever seen? Absolutely not. But there are certain things that you cannot teach, and that's passion and heart. And Malcolm Jenkins has both of those things. You know, I had an opportunity uh, over the past few days, especially on the weekend, I had an opportunity to spend some time to uh, research some Malcolm Jenkins uh, former Saints games, you know, in his first time around when he was young. And I know a lot of people were upset, was upset about the way that Malcolm Jenkins actually played defense. A lot of people think that he was the notorious knee tackler during this time, his first five years with the Saints. But Malcolm Jenkins possessed something with the New Orleans Saints that a lot of people don't have. And like I said, that's hard. One play in particular I would never forget would be when Tampa Bay played the New Orleans Saints and quarterback Josh Freeman threw the ball to wide receiver Vincent Jackson and he was, you know, scurrying down the, down the field for 92 yards. Out of nowhere, here comes Malcolm Jenkins to tackle him down at the one-yard line. And I know a lot of people will probably be thinking to themselves, man, this guy's going to score. This guy's going to... Uh, Go ahead and score. It's going to be a touchdown. Get the offense out here to try to, you know, match them score for score. Malcolm Jenkins tackled this man down at the one-yard line. And it, it caused the Saints to actually create a four and out uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he was in on the majority of the plays. It's been a couple of times where I've seen big runs by running backs and wide receivers while I've seen Malcolm Jenkins not giving up on a play. This is the type of guy that you want on your team, okay? And, and this is the type of guy that will help your organization, will help your franchise make the Super Bowl. 
I feel like Malcolm Jenkins is the missing piece to the puzzle of the New Orleans Saints. And yes, he is 33 years old. He will be at the beginning of the season. But the knowledge and the wisdom and and and, and in the lead by example uh, type mentality that he has is going to help a lot of those guys. That is so important, man. When you have a guy that can lead by example, that that can talk to a guy that sees the field, that can help these young guys develop. And I feel like it is going to be the best thing to ever happen to Marcus Williams. I know a lot of people are upset when Marcus Williams still can't get that Minneapolis miracle out of your minds and you feel like he is a lost cause. But Malcolm Jenkins, the way that he was the first time around, is the same way Marcus Williams is right now. And I feel like the person that will be able to reach Marcus Williams better than any other player would be Malcolm Jenkins because a lot of the issues that Marcus Williams has, or we have with Marcus Williams, excuse me, a lot of people had the same issues with Malcolm Jenkins. I feel like Malcolm Jenkins can wrap his arm around Marcus Williams, talk to him, help him see the field. And, and I feel like some, in some cases, Malcolm Jenkins, you know, was a little bit timid at sometimes too. A lot of heart, but sometimes I feel like he was a tad bit timid. And I feel like with Marcus Williams having a conversation with Malcolm Jenkins, it can help him out tremendously. And not to mention a whole secondary as a whole. You know what I'm saying? The entire secondary. you got a guy that's a, a signal caller, a guy that can tell you, you know what I'm saying, what type of offense is being run. You know what I'm saying? What to watch out for. You know, to have somebody back there that you know that you can trust, that you know is going to make the right decisions, is going to be a plus for the New Orleans Saints. Malcolm Jenkins' acquisition to me is the best since Darren Sharper. And I know when you uh, hear the name Darren Sharper these days, a lot of people are like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, they think about what he did outside of football. But back in 2009, Darren Sharper uh, really helped the Saints uh, on their way to the Super Bowl. He had nine interceptions. I think he had two returns for a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he really did a lot of great things. But I feel like uh, Malcolm Jenkins can do the same thing. No, I'm not talking about when it comes to being a ball hawk. No, I'm not talking about when, it talk, when we were talking about returning the ball for a touchdown. But I'm just talking about the way that he can play and the way that he can position himself uh, to actually make plays and also be able to communicate with guys where they can be in the right position uh, probably to do pass deflections or even some turnovers. This is a very huge, huge acquisition for the New Orleans Saints, and I have nothing, nothing but respect for Malcolm Jenkins. And I think everybody in who that nation should be excited about him uh, coming back for the second time around. We move on to uh, Roman Harper, man. Roman Harper, first off, congratulations to him. He's going to be inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame. And I have to say, man, he, he deserves it. Um, Roman Harper is one of those guys, when I think about the New Orleans Saints, I think about him. Now, I know this is crazy because at one time, when we had these two guys that we're looking at on the screen, when we, when we had these guys in the secondary, we kind of cringed, man, because we felt like these guys were liabilities. Uh, but one thing that you can't say about Roman Harper, man, he was a tough guy. You know what I'm saying? Grandpa Roman, a, as he's called in the Who That Nation because of his, uh, his salt and pepper hair, uh, he always gave it everything that he had, man. Roman Harper wasn't the fastest safety in the world. Uh, he didn't have the best hands. Uh, I remember at one time he caught an interception of Sam Bradford, and as slow as Sam Bradford is, Sam Bradford gunned him down, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> After he caught the interception, and I remember his, his teammates were laughing at him. But Roman Harper was a tough football player, man. I mean, he, he really kind of thrived and had his best uh, seasons in a Greg Williams defense. Um, I remember that season where he led, the, uh, not the NFL, but he led the New Orleans Saints in sacks. He had six sacks this season, that season because, you know, everybody was talking about how weird that was for a safety to uh, have those many sacks. I mean, he was the guy, you know, you sent on a safety blitz, he was getting home. And also, man, he was a really good tackler. Uh, of course, uh, we know that he was a, a liability when it comes to guarding the tight ends, okay? I mean, if he goes up against the athletic tight end, it is going to be a tough day for Roman Harper. Man, it, it used to be horrible watching that. You know what I'm saying? No offense to Roman Harper. I know he follows me on Instagram, and he's like the few of the things, man. So, shouts out to Roman. But uh, tight ends, man, it was a long day for him when he went up against some of the best tight ends in the league. 
But when it came to tackling, man, when he was like that that linebacker out there, I feel like if the New Orleans Saints probably would have had him as a you know linebacker or something like that, you know, mostly in, in linebacker packages, I think he would have thrived, man. I think he would have done a lot more. But he was an Iron Man uh, for uh, six seasons with the New Orleans Saints. He only missed one game. And, of course, we know uh, after he left the New Orleans Saints, uh, he went to the Carolina Panthers, got opportunity to play in the Super Bowl for the second time. Even though he was unsuccessful, the Carolina Panthers ended up losing to the Denver Broncos. But Roman Harper, uh, he always going to hold a special place in my heart as a as a New Orleans Saints, as a fan favorite, you know what I'm saying? Like when it came to, like, uh, you know, that defense back in 2009, he was a part of that defense that led the league in turnovers and, you know, they were fun to watch, man. They weren't the most talented defense in the world. Uh, you know, they didn't, you know, it wasn't like they were the 85 Bears or the 2000 Baltimore Ravens or anything like that. But they had a lot of hustle, man. They had a lot of heart, a lot of passion for the game. And uh, Roman Harper was one of those guys, man. When he, put his, when he put his hands on you, man, you're going down. I mean, he said double, he had double digit, uh, not double digit sacks, excuse me, he had triple digit tackles, um, over 100 tackles a couple seasons. Um, you know, it wasn't a ball hawk or anything like that, but you can always count on him uh, to make a play, uh, especially like in games, you know, that mattered most. So, shouts out to Roman Harper. Congratulations to him. Being a part of the Saints Hall of Fame, uh, you know, man, you, you really deserve it, and we appreciate your contributions to the Who That Nation. I'm pretty sure everyone in the Who That Nation uh, echoes my sentiments. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you think. Do you think that Malcolm Jenkins is one of the most important acquisitions that the Saints had since this side of Darren Sharp or Jonathan Velma? Or do you feel like he's just going to be, you know, a cog on a wheel? And also Roman Harper. What do you think about Roman Harper being inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame? Comment down below. Like and share this video. Really do appreciate you. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Search The State of the Saints Podcast facebook.com search the state of the saints podcast and and also the audio version of the state of the saints podcast is available on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, and every other podcast outlet that you can think of <laughs> till next time all i gotta say is who that <laughs>